Hi all, I, I wanna take you through my process to build a dashboard in Altair. And uh, to do that, I'm gonna to try to recreate a dashboard um, that I look at a lot. This one's on a, a website called Strava, which is an aggregator of fitness, bike run data. Um, and here we're actually looking at an example um, from one of one of my own runs. So I, uh, the Boston Marathon was, was canceled in 2020. Um, so I ran a, a virtual version, meaning I just went out for a run by myself, and um, this is what it looked like. I started at my house and I ran downhill to uh, to the local town of Amherst. Um, so so here's a link to the activity itself, um, and I'm going to go ahead and try to rebuild this in Altair. Um, so this is this is what it looks like. You got the speed, elevation, um, the splits along the left, and you've got the uh, the, the map with with the line. Um, if you actually look at the, the graph on Strava, if we were to hop over there, hovering on, on any of these uh, splits will highlight that portion on, on the map and it'll also highlight that portion in the elevation. Um, so I, I want to recreate some of that interaction as well. Um, we saw that in, in Geographic Altera, right, we don't have the, the base layer defined very well. Um, so here we're just going to stick to just plotting, just plotting the line um, uh, with the right, with the right geographic projection. Um, and we'll try to get all these pieces together. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and first start up the kernel. Um, I've stuck the data um, out here on uh, on a gist so that this notebook will run without needing the, the data as a local file. I, I was using it as a local file. Um, as a GPX file, um, and we're going to use uh, GPXP to, to parse the to parse the uh, the raw data, the actual GPX file that comes out of a out of a fitness watch. Um, so here we go, um, and we're going to use some of these some of these other GeoPy uh, to compute the, the distance between each point. Um, so we're going to have to do some uh, we're going to have to do some do some different transformations on the raw data. Uh, so we'll get these loaded up, and then we can go and actually get the data. So I'm going to just use a request library to go pull that data right off of uh, right off the gist, and then go ahead and parse it with GPXP. Um, so there we go. We've got it. It's got name, virtual Boston Marathon. It's a GPX track. Um, we can look at this uh, this data D. Um, it has a tracks attribute. We can look at there. There's one track. That track has one segment. If we dive in there and look at the points, there's 12,000 Latlon points in here. Um, if we look at what one of those points look like, it looks like this. We've got a time, an elevation, and a lat lawn. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, this data structure, I'm going to flatten it out. Um, so it would look like this, right? This is going to be the flattened version of just the first point. So I took the first point out of the you know, first segment. I guess it would actually be the second point, right, um, that I took out of here. And uh, here we go. This is what it looks like uh, in as a, uh, as a dictionary um, extracted out of this GPX track point. Um, and here I am also computing the distance between that point and the one before it. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and, and do that for every point um, and then throw this into pandas. Um, and then here I try to keep all my data aggregation in, in just one cell um, so that when I, when I run this and, and regenerate the data frame, all these different ones get, get rerun. So I added these over time as I was building this out. Um, and here, right, I've got elevation change, time change, uh, distance, speed, and I went and computed the mile. Um, I did this here um, on the data itself um, because we're going to use that as, as, one of the, uh, as one of the interactions on Altair. So we, we can hover on that, that mile marker. Um, and then, yeah, computing the mile averages. Um, so a lot of the data transformation, just doing it in pandas here. Um, if we run through all of that and we look at the top of the data, um, we're going to get something that looks like this. It's pretty quick, 12,000 points, so not, not the fastest iteration loop, but, uh, but, but it works for us. Um, and we can see that the computation on each of these speed and net time on the mile. Um, this is going to build out our graph on the left, you can kind of see. Um, and if we look at the end of the data, right, I'm going to want to see that this ended up in you know, mile, mile 26. Actually, we had to run a little bit extra to make it to where I was trying to go. Um, so first, uh, first I want to build the, the main plot, which is this lat lawn track. Um, so we can go ahead and just plot each each latitude and longitude point. Um, this is going to be pointing, you know, plotting 12,000 points on the chart. And here we go, right? Uh, I did it. Lat lawn Altair is default, right? Is to stick to zero um, as a baseline. We can get rid of that. Um, and here, you know, we're not using any geo encoding, right? We're just plotting the circles with the raw latitude and longitude. Um, and it looks like this. Um, there we go. We've got all the circles. We've removed the zeros. It looks pretty good. It looks pretty good. Um, it's turned a little bit, uh, and because uh, we're not we're not actually projecting this, uh, so we actually got to flip lat lawn. Um, and let's also switch it to a line. Um, so this is plotting all the circles. 
Um, but if we want to plot a line, um, we can do that. And uh, you can see here, uh, Altair made an assumption that for plotting a line, that it's, what it's doing is it's connecting every consecutive X point, um, right? It's not, it's not, you know, connecting all the dots, right? It's actually going ahead and connecting uh, every point on X. Um, so it's not exactly what we want to do, um, but here we're doing it without a projection. What we can tell Altair is we want to order it by time. Uh, so go ahead and connect these by time. Don't worry about sorting them on X. Um, and so this is going to give us the line that we were looking for. Um, right, again, we didn't do any, any geographic projection. Um, we're just plotting it out there. It looks like it's laid out the right way. Um, um, but we can go ahead and actually just encode that uh, with a map projection by just running a projection right on it. So uh, we can just do projection of Albers USA. Looks roughly the same, um, but we know that, that it's actually going to have to do a little bit of transformation for us. Really zoomed in, so it's not going to make a huge difference. Um, and then uh, we can go ahead and uh, add the, the line uh, to the map. So let's see what we get here. Um, so here, right, we're, we're adding a, a red line on top of it. Um, and oh, so here we're doing is taking the map without the projection, the map with the projection, and, and laying them on top of each other. One red uh, with the projection, or with no projection, red and projection blue. You see, it's actually really, really close here. Uh, you can't even really see the difference uh, with the projection. Um, but we can do it. And if you were making a really big, really big uh, run, it would it would matter. Okay, the next chart was the elevation one, um, and you know it's pretty easy to build the elevation chart. We we encoded elevation points on, on the whole data, and uh, we can go and make the elevation chart using just a, an area plot. There we go. Looks uh, like I, I chose to run downhill for the first uh, half and then uh, and then go, go across. Um, if we want to go ahead and facet that, great. We can use the pipe operator in Altair to go and uh, facet them uh, horizontally, and we're going to get our map and our elevation chart looking good. Um, so uh, we want to start to add some interaction between these um, so we can make these two play together. So I'm going to do is I'm going to take uh, I'm going to take a vertical line, right, and I'm going to go ahead and, and stick that on top of the elevation chart, um, and then I'm going to add that line as a selector, right. I'm going to show that line on selection. Um, so here, right, um, let's just go ahead and run with this, and uh, we can we can walk through the code in a little detail. Here we're just adding a line, right. So this is going to allow us to to kind of hover along on the on the um, elevation chart and connect that to the map. This is one of the interactions that's on the Strava dashboard. Um, so, so here, right, this is, uh, this is actually a line, the elevation line on top. Um, right nearest, this is our selector. Um, so Altair offers these different selection options. Um, here, right, we're going to do nearest. So what that means is like we're going to grab the point that we're nearest to. So you can see that I'm not actually hovering on the line, I'm hovering up here. So that's the nearest selector. Um, Right, and it's it's working on time, the time that you're nearest to, um, and then I'm going to go ahead and do the just do the chart. So here's um, here's that point, right, mark point, and uh, I'm going to set the opacity at zero, right, and then I'm going to go ahead and add a selection, add the selection to it, and then here I can go and set that opacity as a condition on that nearest selector. Um, so this is what's actually, oops. This is what's doing the interaction for us. Um, and finally, here's the rule, right? So um, I'm going to go ahead and only show, uh, or going to move the rule by nearest. Um, so, right, just doing time, right, transform filter on nearest. And this is going to give us, uh, we're actually putting five different things here the rule, um, the point, which we see on the hover, the selector um, itself, right, um, the selector chart on, on top. Um, it's just layered on the whole thing. And then uh, our line and our, our line area. I guess we don't need the probably the line on top of the area. We don't need both of these. Um, but I think we can get rid of that one. Um, and yeah, it's still going to work. Um, so this is what we want. We've got this. Now we got to connect it. So let's connect uh, the map and the elevation tooltip. So here we've got the map. And we can just go ahead and horizontally concat these. Here what I've done is I've added a point on the map. And I set the opacity to condition on nearest. Um, so pretty simple, uh, this one's going to work, um, right? We can just add that interaction. So here, I can hover here on the map, and I can see where I was at those various elevations and also on the time scale. There we go, out, across, and back. <laughs> um, and then to mimic the dashboard a little bit, right, I can use the ampersand operator, or, you know, I could use the cat function directly and stick one above the other. Cool. Now we're just missing uh, the, the mile splits. Um, so let's go and build the table. Um, there's an example here, um, which I think I answered one of the issues from them. 
Um, and uh, we're going to build on that. So here we're going to use mark text, right? And we're going to just take those um, those columns that I created on the data frame and use those. Um, so let, let's go ahead and give this a shot. Um, so oop, encoding field that type. It does not match any column. Uh, so I'm looking for a mile on df. For which one? Mile. Title mile. Text. Oh, here we go. Uh, I didn't specify any text. Splits dot encode. So here's splits. Um, We've given it a text. We've encoded text as mile. I don't know why we blanked that out. I think uh, let's keep it with text as the mile. Let's see what we get. Ah, so we got the mile, right? Um, and I think here we can give this as the net elevation. I think that was our columns called. Yeah, so you can see the elevation change over that mile. Cool. Okay, so now we've got this. Um, right, it will be helpful to you. Uh, you know, we've got these axes here. If we plot it, it's just two charts, right, with axes. And here, one of the things you'll, you'll notice actually is that it, it's dark here because what it did is it plotted for every GPS point on the thing. It went and plotted the mile and elevation on top. It layered them all on top. Um, so here, uh, we, we we can go ahead and fix that if we want. Um, so here, same idea. We added the mile split. Um, and yeah, I don't know why I lost it on the previous one. Um, and we can mess around with stroke width. We're going to try to get something that, that looks nice. Um, and I actually do fix this later, so I'll show you what that looks like. Um, but here we go. We've got the elevation. We've got the, the mile splits, and we've got the map. It's looking pretty good. Um, let's go ahead and connect them um, so we can add a hover, a selection, um, on the table itself. So we're going to add a selection on the mile, um, and then we're going to go ahead and add that on the map. right? And what we're going to do is we're going to plot circles on the map. Whenever we hover on a mile split, we're going to plot red circles on the map where that mile is. Um, so let's give that one a shot. Um, so here we're, we're putting uh, we're going to put circles on the map whenever we hover on a mile. And it looks like that is working. So the, everywhere here when we hover, it's going to pull the mile out. And it's going to plot all the circles that match that mile. Cool. So you can see each, each mile split. OK. Um, and here, right? Um, so let's see, save the splits. Oh yeah, so I'm trying to <laughs> trying to fix the splits. Um, where here, right? I, I was layering them over each other. Um, and let's see, here's mile splits. Uh, it matters that we encode them using the ordinal type. Uh, so, oh, just playing around here. Yeah, you can go ahead and encode them using just the color. Yeah, this is actually the speed. You can see it was fast here, slowing down. Yeah. Or no, sorry, elevation. Yeah, going downhill. And then uh, there must have been an uphill there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> OK, uh, one thing we can do, uh, we don't want the text stopped on top of each other. So I actually uh, extract a sub data frame here, which is just, uh, just the mile splits themselves. Um, so I've grouped it by mile, right? And uh, extracted just the net times. Um, so I don't want to plot them on top of each other, um, so I can go ahead and do that, right? Um, if we wanted to do the pace chart, you know, we saw the elevation chart, and we had the pace chart on top. It looks something like this, right? Um, again, there's a little bit of smoothing we could do. Um, and finally, I'm just going to stick these all together. So let's see what we got. Um, here we go. We've got the we've got the elevation chart. We stuck the pace chart at the bottom. We could layer that if we want. That would be a good thing to do next. We've got an interaction here where we're getting the hover. We've got the mile splits working. We're showing those in blue. I matched the colors too, so the map is actually red, and we've got a blue hover. Um, so if you hover on any of these mile splits, you'll see the split there, um, and you can see where that was in terms of elevation. Um, this is really the chart. We could go ahead and stack um, stack this here if we wanted to too. Um, you can see it's actually, I went ahead and just linked the, the circle there. Um, so I'll leave this one. You guys can go ahead and check out uh, all, the, all the different things going on here. Um, but this is really, I think, show, showcasing some of the full power of Voltaire to, you know, we rebuilt that entire thing and I stuck all the code back in here. I'm not relying on any previous ones. You know, we did it and it's a good bit of code to go ahead through this in Altair and add all the different interactions and stuff. But we rebuilt the, the core dashboard for the site and, you know, maybe, maybe 100 lines in Altair. Um, and yeah, that's it.
that's working pretty well. Um, so there, there's a trade-off between you know how much you can customize a graphic. Like if we built this in D3, it may be easier to customize the, the chart. You know, we could use an HTML table um, versus like the expressive power. Um, so here, I think Altair is really showcasing how well it strikes the balance between being um, being able to build simple things quickly, but also being able to go down in detail and customize and add these interactions. So I think it it extends pretty far in the direction of covering a wide space where you can. You do have the high level, um, right? Which of course you don't in D3, right? Um, but you can extend pretty closely and build some pretty pretty complex things and you can really adjust the details in Altair. Um, so I think it does a really beautiful job kind of spanning that gap and covering a lot of the space. Um, so here's an example dashboard and you know, um, you can you can take any code here and look at how to how to expand it. Um, but uh, just building on the, the basic concepts that, that we've seen already with the, with the interactions and selections and uh, faceting and concatenating and all of that. So uh, enjoy. And uh, yeah, uh, there are a few, a few to-dos here, and I was trying to work on getting a, a base map under here, and uh, we might get that to work uh, in Leaflet under Altair, um, but still some, still some directions to improve, and, um, but yeah, I think, it's, I think it's pretty cool we were able to build, so thanks.